In this video, we shall be studying about what is keratoconjunctivitis, how do we identify that a particular conjunctivitis is of virus etiology, what are the four main presentations of adenoviral conjunctivitis in which we go into the details of epidemic keratoconjunctivitis and the pharyngoconjunctival fever, what are DNA versus RNA viruses which cause conjunctivitis and basically what is meant by the subepithelial infiltrates. So, first of all, let us discuss about the keratoconjunctivitis. As we all know that conjunctivitis is basically the inflammation of the conjunctiva. Whereas, when both the cornea and the conjunctival epithelium are involved with inflammation, it is called keratoconjunctivitis. The keratoconjunctivitis of viral etiology can actually be caused by both RNA and DNA containing virus. A lot of DNA containing viruses can cause conjunctivitis. However, the most common ones are the adenovirus and the herpes simplex virus. Coming to the RNA virus, we have the Picorna viruses, the Paramyxovirus, Toga virus, Flavivirus, and the Filovirus. What is important here is to note that the DNA viruses will cause severe inflammation and causing vision threatening conjunctivitis. However, the RNA virus, on the other hand, will cause mild and benign inflammation of the conjunctiva. The viral conjunctivitis can basically be identified based upon some specific conjunctival features along with the corneal features and some systemic features right so as i told you already that the uh, viral conjunctivitis is most of the time keratoconjunctivitis because it involves both the conjunctiva as well as the cornea so under the headings we shall be studying first of all what are the conjunctival signs the corneal signs and the systemic signs so first of all let us talk about the conjunctival signs that is seen viral conjunctivitis just like any other conjunctivitis we are going to see either unilateral or bilateral diffuse conjunctival congestion or hyperemia right apart from that the type of reaction that we see in case of virus uh, associated conjunctivitis is the follicular reaction and this is seen in the lower tarsal plate apart from that we can see conjunctival hemorrhages presence of membranes and pseudo membranes now all these I've explained you in my second video on conjunctivitis in which I explained about the various reactions in the conjunctiva so in this picture, you can see the fuse sort of conjunctival congestion. You can make out that the hyperemia or redness is actually more in the furnaces and it decreases as you go towards the limbus. So this is one hallmark of the conjunctival congestion. This picture over here is depicting the formation of membranes, which is again an important um, finding that you see in conjunctiva in case of virus etiology. In this picture, you can see this reddish spots on the palpable conjunctiva of the upper eyelid. Okay, so these are nothing but these are petechial hemorrhages, again seen in case of adenoviral conjunctivitis. After we have discussed about the conjunctival signs, let us go about and study some of the corneal signs that you can find in case of viral conjunctivitis. So we can have epithelial microcysts. We can have punctate epithelial keratitis, we can have anterior stromal infiltrate and sometimes pseudodendritic epithelial formation. A true dendritic epithelial formation you will see in case of an HSV keratitis. Okay. However, there uh, can be cases of adenoviral conjunctivitis as well in which the patient sometimes will have membranes and those membranes are going to rub against the, against the cornea leading to pseudodendritic epithelial formation. For me. This picture over here is depicting the epithelial microcyst often seen in the very early stage of adenoviral keratoconjunctivitis. Here you can see multiple punctate lesions okay, which are seen in the epithelium and stained with the fluorescent dye therefore it's looking greenish in color and this is a picture showing you punctate epithelial keratitis. So this punctate epithelial keratitis usually occur within about 7 to 10 days of the onset of symptoms and however it can resolve on its own within 2 weeks period. 
then as the, as the infection progresses it can lead to the formation of the sub epithelial infiltrates okay so you can see this infiltrates which are extending not just in the epithelium but they have actually invaded a part of the stroma as well so these are called sub epithelial infiltrates we shall be talking about them in detail after some time in this video when i discussed uh, with you regarding the adenoviral conjunctivitis so the sub epithelial infiltrates are much more uh, deeper in their uh, location they involve not just the epithelium but the moment's membrane along with the superficial layers of the stroma these epithelial opacities if you see under a diffuse examination they appear as superficial slightly you know raised color gray dots i have scattered over the central area of the cornea and most of the time these sub epithelial infiltrates because they are sub epithelial in location they will not take up your fluorescent stain next we have the various systemic signs which are seen in keratoconjunctivitis associated with viruses so mostly in bacterial conjunctivitis you don't see these systemic signs however the viral conjunctivitis usually present with these systemic signs so you can have lymphadenopathy which is mostly the preauricular lymphadenopathy apart from that some patients might have prodromal features like fever diarrhea they can have upper respiratory tract infection cold or sore throat as well okay and these systemic features are more common with the pharyngoconjunctival fever which is also referred to as the pcf okay which is one type of presentation of the adenoviral conjunctivitis so i'll mention i'll tell you about that in a while so you can have fever you can have headaches and you can also have the lymphadenopathy mostly it is the preauricular lymphadenopathy let us now talk about the adenoviral keratoconjunctivitis now the adenovirus actually is quite a diverse virus it has about 6 subgroups from a b c d e and f okay and if you carefully observe each subgroup has various serotypes under it however uh, the subgroup which is of importance with ophthalmological point of view is the subgroup b subgroup c d and e The adenovirus is actually the most common cause of viral conjunctivitis as i told you it has six subgroups or subgenuses from a to f and most more than half of the adenovirus serotypes okay that is almost about 32 they belong to this subgenus or subgroup d so the subgroup d is a very important genotype or is a very important subgenus of the adenoviral because it has lots of serotype almost about 32 and uh, with few exceptions almost all adenoviral conjunctivitis is actually caused by this subgenus that is subgenus d so that is when uh, important point to remember coming to the clinical presentations of adenoviral conjunctivitis we have four clinical presentations we have the pharyngoconjunctival fever we have epidemic keratoconjunctivitis then adenovirus can cause acute follicular conjunctivitis and chronic conjunctivitis as well now first of all we shall be discussing about a second presentation which is also considered to be the prototype presentation of adenovirus keratoconjunctivitis and this is the epidemic keratoconjunctivitis which is also abbreviated as ekc so now this is mostly caused by the subgenus d as i told you and it is actually considered to be the severest ocular disease caused by adenovirus and the adenovirus serotypes that is serotype 8 serotype 19 and serotype 37 basically cause this ekc and they all belong to the subgenus that is subgenus d Adenovirus 8 is actually considered to be the classic cause of EKC and the clinical picture that you get with this adenoviral 8 infection is considered to be the prototype of all the various other adenoviral uh, diseases. Coming to the transmission, how is this adenovirus transmitted? So basically it is transmitted from contaminated fingers or objects in the swimming pool water can transmit and even in the clinics with the use of some instruments like tonometer tips it can spread the disease along with hand contact in the doctor's office. Now 
as I told you that usually the keratoconjunctivitis is associated with conjunctival signs and corneal signs and the systemic signs. So what are the signs that you see in case of this severe presentation of adenoviral keratoconjunctivitis which is the EKC, epidemic keratoconjunctivitis. We see subconjunctival hemorrhages, we can see membranes, we can see follicular reactions and most of the time the reaction is actually a mixed reaction in which you will see follicles as well as papillae and mostly seen in the lower palpebral conjunctiva. You can also see these follicles actually mixed with these petical hemorrhages sometimes and obviously you will see hyperemia or the conjunctival congestion. Now we know that the EKC is the severest type of the uh, is the most dangerous type of the conjunctivitis caused by virus and why is it, it is dangerous is because the conjunctivitis is not just limited to conjunctiva it can actually spread to cornea as well and how do you know that your conjunctivitis is going to spread to keratitis is by marked worsening of photophobia and tearing and discomfort so whenever that happens it often heralds the presence of keratitis now what actually happens in keratitis caused by the adenovirus so as I mentioned about the corneal changes, the first change that occurs is the formation of some cysts, right, or vesicles. So this is called the microcystic changes and most often they're not really visible uh, with the naked eye examination or even with a slit lamp examination. They're very microcystic changes. Then gradually what happens is that these, these cystic lesions will become elevated with more and more cells coming up there, the inflammatory cells. So basically what is happening in adenoviral keratoconjunctivitis is that we have an infection in the body and the inflammatory cells will come to the rescue and they will form these aggregations, okay, which are seen as cysts or perceptible elevated lesions. Now, as these lesions become elevated, now you will, if you do a fluorescent staining, you will see a green color tear film and you will see empty holes in that tear film because of these elevated lesions so they are these are not erosions which will take stain these are actually elevated lesions which will not take up stain and this is called negative staining if they were to erode then you will definitely see a staining in case of uh, adenoviral keratoconjunctivitis now after some time you will have coalescence of these lesions right so these lesions are going to fuse together and involve even the deeper layers of your epithelium now this is called this is actually called keratitis if it is in the form of dots it is called punctate superficial keratitis if it involves the deeper layer it is called deeper keratitis now gradually what will happen as you can see here that there are some inflammatory cells present in the superficial layer so it's called superficial keratitis once it reaches the deeper layer it is called deeper keratitis and if it involves the bowmans and reaches up to the stroma in the anterior stromal area it is called sub epithelial infiltrates okay so sub epithelial infiltrates are basically your aggregation of inflammatory cells below the epithelium in the anterior stroma near the bowman's membrane right so at this stage some books also mention uh, this to be stromal keratitis because your inflammation is now present in the stromal region so now let's summarize the stages of keratitis in adenoviral Keratitis. So, first of all, stage 0 is presence of imperceptible vesicle or cystic stages. It occurs as early as 2 days. You can uh, see it in the picture. So, very tiny vesicles which are not really visible on the slit lamp. Then we have stage 1 which are perceptible elevated lesions. They appear as dark holes in stained tear film. They can again occur as early as 2 days. Then we have the stage of superficial keratitis. Now when these lesions are going to start getting mixed up together, coalescence of these lesions and then there will be further involvement of the deeper epithelium when this superficial keratitis will now become a deeper keratitis. Then you have stage 3 in which you will have some subepithelial infiltrates coming up near the Bowman's and the anterior stroma. At this level, the subepithelial infiltrates are quite faint and they are detected during the second week of infection. And this is actually seen in about 43% of your patients who will have adenoviral keratoconjunctivitis. 
After that, you have the stage four in which you will see these classic sub epithelial infiltrates. So you can see these whitish lesions, right? So these can occur weeks to even months after the infection. And since they are nicely localized below the level of epithelium, they will not take up any fluorescent stain right so most of the problems that occur is because of this classic sub epithelial infiltrates in case of adenoviral keratoconjunctivitis then we have stage 5 this is a stage of punctate granularity in which not just you have sub epithelial infiltrate but you will have some abnormal epithelium overlying that sub epithelial infiltrate which is called stage of punctate granularity so basically the stage 4 and stage 5 are detected after the third week and they can come even months later but they will not occur before the third week of presentation and obviously because they are present below the level of epithelium you will not see any staining. Now because of this presence of this sub epithelial infiltrate the patient will experience decreased visual equity now if you would remember normally conjunctivitis will not lead to decreased visual equity unless and until patient has keratitis right so here also sub epithelial infiltrates will lead to decreased visual equity there will be halo formation glare photopopia and even decreased contrast sensitivity so adenoviral keratoconjunctivitis the sub epithelial infiltrates are more common with infection with adenoviral 0 r5 and 8 and adenoviral 8 h has higher incidence of keratitis when compared to adenoviral 8 c and adenoviral 8 e so again remember this adenoviral 8 h so you have subgroups you have 0 r's and then they can further be divided the duration of the superficial keratitis is usually going to be the two weeks duration. You mean I mean to say the microcystic stage and the superficial keratitis where you have those punctate lesions and even the deeper keratitis, right? So though that is just limited to about two weeks duration. However, uh, in case of adenoviral 8 infection, it is typically longer over three weeks. After three weeks, if the patient has no resolution of the infection, then what we get is the subepithelial infiltrates and its various other complications. Now the question is we're talking so much about this sub epithelial infiltrates but what exactly are these sub epithelial infiltrates? So as you can see over here what happens is that once the adenovirus is actually affecting the epithelium we will have various chemokines coming up and these chemokines are CXCL8 right so as they are expressed near the Bowman's membrane a lot of uh, these chemokines will attract the neutrophils towards them leading to accumulation of neutrophil at those locations so your sub epithelial infiltrate also abbreviated as SEI are lymphocytic infiltrate in the superficial corneal stroma and the overlying deep epithelium and they represent basically an immune reaction against the adenoviral antigen these are most commonly uh, present in the, near the Bowman's and they can they most commonly diminish with time but even with treatment sometimes they will cause photophobia blurred vision for many many months and in some cases can also cause scarring so as we know that the end results of inflammation if not tackled properly is fibrosis the same thing can happen in the eye as well and these sub epithelial infiltrates can ultimately lead to significant visual scarring leading to effect on the visual equity now let us summarize basically the evolution of this epidemic keratoconjunctivitis. So we have an infective phase in which if the conjunctiva is getting affected, we have conjunctivitis. And in the infective phase, it is usually the superficial epithelium which gets affected either in the form of cyst or in the form of punctate superficial keratitis. And then the body realizes that there is infection and it triggers an immune response. So that is the stage of immune phase. So what happens when the immune system is triggered, you will have severe inflammation trying to fight against the infection of adenovirus. And that severe inflammation can also lead to pseudomembrane formation, which is seen in about 20 to 60% of the patients infected with adenovirus. And you can have sub epithelial infiltrate formation because ultimately we know that the sub epithelial infiltrates are also nothing but they are the lymphocytes now this is again seen in 43 to 50 percent of the patients now if the immune phase subsides taking away the uh, adenovirus along with it it's okay 
otherwise it can go up to the healing phase and in that either patient can have complete resolution or they can have permanent corneal scarring because of the scarring occurring after the subepithelial infiltrates or they can have some problems because of these membranes which are there in the conjunctiva so they can have simplifron formation they can have conjunct subconjunctival scarring and they can have damage to the limbal area they can have damage to the mucin because of the uh, constant inflammation present in the eye and a decreased level of goblet cells in the eye leading to dry eye formation right so that is how the ekc or epidemic keratoconjunctivitis basically evolves over time now this was a very interesting article published in igo and you can see that in the first picture there's actually sub epithelial corneal infiltrates and in the anterior segment oct of the same cornea you can see this hyper reflectivity which is present just beneath the intact bowman's membrane here the bowman's membrane is intact and therefore it tells us that we are dealing with just simple sub epithelial corneal infiltrate however if the bowman's membrane gets affected and you have this wavy pattern here okay and here there's a disruption of the bowman's membrane it actually tells you that you are actually dealing with permanent adenoviral scars so just observe these uh, in this picture and compare it to the previous one so these are quite localized sub epithelial infiltrate but here scarring has started and these epithelial infiltrates have now lost their shape as well so this is your adenoviral scars next clinical presentation that we are going to talk about out of these four is the pharyngo conjunctival fever so the pharyngo conjunctival fever as the name suggests there will be pharyngitis there will be conjunctivitis and as i told you in virus we have follicular conjunctivitis we will have fever and there will be adenopathy that is preauricular or cervical adenopathy the pharyngo conjunctival fever basically patients will also have very severe pharyngitis in which they will have difficulty in swallowing of the food and when you do a oral examination you will find this reddish mucosa present over the pharynx without any sort of exudates now exudation is basically a feature of bacterial pharyngitis and over here we are talking about adenovirus so definitely you will not see any exudates however if there's any lower respiratory tract infection if you find hepatomegaly splenomegaly or any sort of rash it is quite uncommon with adenovirus and you might you might have to think of some other non adenoviral etiology in those patients so what are the symptoms of this pharyngo conjunctival fever so usually this pharyngo conjunctival fever will have a sequential involvement often the first eye will get involved and then the second eye and the second eye is clinically less severe compared to the first eye and the patient initially will complain of abrupt onset of itching and irritation and many of them will have lots and lots of discharge the discharge just like the virus etiology as i told mentioned to you in the introductory video on conjunctivitis the type of discharge you see in case of virus and allergic conjunctivitis is a serous discharge so you will have the serous discharge but the discharge is so abundant that it will lead to crusting of the superior and inferior lashes causing difficulty with opening of the eyes in the morning now the the serotypes which basically causes pharyngo conjunctival fever are the serotypes 3 4 and 7 and as you can see these 3 4 and 7 basically belong to the subgroup b and c now these uh, pharyngo conjunctival fever it basically is highly infectious disease and occurs in small outbreaks now most of the time they have seen that it occurs because of personal contact fomites swimming pools and ponds and in fact that pharyngo conjunctival fever is one of the most common illness which is seen by physicians at children's summer camp coming to the communicability it is extremely high during the first several days and it can actually last for about 2 weeks after the onset of symptoms it is the same with ekc as well 2 to 3 weeks after the onset of symptoms is the communicability uh, period 
Coming to the signs, obviously you will see hyperemia and congestion just like any other conjunctivitis and about the corneal signs in case of pharyngoconjunctival fever, you will just find mild punctate keratitis detectable by second day to first week after the onset of symptoms. However, they will become diffuse after some time and maybe just they will persist for a week and then spontaneously they will resolve. The subepithelial infiltrates that we talked about in detail in this video are seen in EKC and they are not seen in case of patients with pharyngoconjunctival fever. So that is a very important point. How do you basically differentiate these pharyngoconjunctival fever from the EKC? EKC infection is definitely more severe compared to the PCF and the conditions although may be similar biomicroscopically but the prevalence of unilateral disease is more in EKC. So as I told you, in pharyngoconjunctival fever, it is usually a sequential involvement of both the eyes, but in EKC, it is usually a unilateral disease. Apart from that, definitely the stromal infiltrates, the subepithelial infiltrates, it is more of a feature of the epidemic keratoconjunctivitis. So whenever there's absence of extraocular manifestations like pharyngitis and fever, if those things are absent along with that severe stromal infiltrates are present, then you have to think in terms of EKC rather than considering the pharyngoconjunctival fever. The third type of presentation is the acute non-specific follicular conjunctivitis. Now, as you know, this is a milder form of a form of presentation. Keratitis is just limited to epithelium, and most of the time, it's absent. You might just see some preauricular adenopathy, and it often resolves by about third week. Now, some patients which are infected during an outbreak of EKC might actually be having this mild disease of non-specific follicular conjunctivitis. Now, these patients, because they don't have a bothersome disease, they will not visit the doctor and however, they are going to actually act as a reservoir and can actually spread the disease in the community. The fourth presentation is that of chronic follicular conjunctivitis. The chronic conjunctivitis is actually the least common form of adenovirus conjunctivitis and adenovirus 2, 3, 4 and 5 serotypes have been isolated. Symptoms are said to persist for much longer time for a typical case of adenovirus and sometimes they can even be recovered for months and years after the onset of symptom. Now they will have a waxing, waning sort of superficial punctate epithelial keratitis. Sometimes they can have subepithelial infiltrates as well. Both the eyes can get affected, follicular reaction will be there but they will have this spontaneous resolution so that's all for today thank you and have a nice day